hey everyone welcome back to the channel if you are using firebase real-time database then you have probably seen these mysterious lines of code called rules but what do they actually do and how can you use them to protect your database like a pro today i am going to explain everything you need to know about firebase real-time database rules from basics to advanced examples so you can secure your app and manage access like a boss. Towards the end of this video we will even create a fully functional secure set of rules for the app that we created in previous videos. So let's get started. Firebase rules are like security guards for your database. They control who can read or write data to certain parts of your database under what conditions. Normally people use three simple rule sets. The most secure rule set, closed rules, which means nobody can read or write your data. But it is useless because you won't be able to read your data in your apps. So second use case is public rule set, which means anyone can read or write your data, which is the most dangerous thing because anyone can steal your data, modify your data, ruin your app. Third one is uh, test mode which is basically public but have a expiry time mostly people use this rule set when their app is in development okay so this one is basically same as second rule set public and third one is only authenticated users can read or write data Firebase rules follow the structure of your data. You can write rules for a specific nodes just like writing a JSON tree. There are three main rule types. Dot read controls if data can be read. Dot write controls if data can be written or updated. And dot validate controls if the value being written is allowed. We will look into these later when we are crafting rules for our app. Rules are inherited from parent nodes unless overridden. This means if you deny access at the top level, everything below it is blocked unless you open it again. This blocks all reads except the public node. If you are doing queries like order by child in your app, you must tell the Firebase to index that field. This speeds up queries and prevents errors when using order by child timestamp. Always test your rules. Firebase console has a built-in rules playground for this. You can simulate read sites and check if they are allowed or denied before you publish your rules. Now let's create rules. First of all, let's set most important rule. Admins, uh, who can read, uh, let's say only logged in users, who can write, nobody. Because this is the most important thing, safest way to add admins will be adding them directly from the Firebase website. Then down to the events, slash upcoming. Mm, read true everybody should be able to see upcoming events for the right if auth is not equal to null which means user is logged in and root dot child admins dot child auth dot uid dot exists 
which means user should be admin because user's uid should exist at the admin's path in our data so only admins can add upcoming events in the ongoing events we have same rule everybody can see ongoing events but only admins can edit them or add new events for the participation we have set dot read true everybody should be able to see participations but data can be only added at participation slash event id slash uid and who can write the data either admin or user himself only other users can't change data for the results we have same as ongoing and upcoming everybody should be able to read data but only admins can change or add new data and then we the users node slash uid dot write only user himself dot read only user himself and then we arrive in the wallets node slash user id dot read uh, only user himself dot write only admins then we arrive in the transactions node admins can read all transactions users can read only their specific transactions just for reference this is how data and transactions node looks like this is users uid and this is transaction id all user data will be stored in this uid and each transaction will have a separate uid for adding the data we are we have added not data exists is close here so users can only add new data and in the admins part we have added data dot exists so admins can only edit existing data like changing the status of transaction etc admins cannot add new transactions user have to request a transaction then admin can only approve it or reject it then we are using dot validate here we are making sure these three keys exist in the data type amount and status then we arrive in the type we validate type is only one of the allowed type is at the validation slash transactions slash type and in the amount we are validating that amount is a number and it ranges between 0 to 99 that's our limit you can change the limit you can set any numbers that you want and then we are validating the status only allowed status at the validation slash transaction slash status and yeah we have added that data manually by adding a admin i will show you how to add data manually if you added a system to show the admin status in your admin panels it will show you you are not admin and if you still try to make changes like changing the date here and click on update you may think it is updated but if you go back and check it again it is actually not updated in the database 
and even if you try to check transactions it will not load permission denied so how to make yourself an admin first of all copy your uid go to firebase slightly put your finger over this a plus icon will appear click on it and then enter admins slash paste your uid and in the value enter any value like true false or even you can store username the value doesn't matter your uid should exist and you will be considered as the admin now in the admin panel if you check yourself you will be admin you can make changes approve transactions and to remove someone as the admin you have to delete their uid and again they will not be the admin so this is all about firebase real time database security rules to show your support hit the like button i may make more videos on the firebase if this video gets a good response